Welcome to the Yellow Peril Podcast, where we help you navigate the perilous world of Asian American identity through pop culture, sex, politics, and whatever other random stuff is currently distracting us. Welcome back, Yellow Perilers. Greetings to all you Mendozas, all you Ipinos, all you Santosas. This is episode 65. I'm Oki. This is CB. Leanne. Today we have a very special guest with us. Very excited. Who is it? It's Patrick Apina. Woo! Thanks for joining, man. Oh, thanks for having me, dude. Um, so we have Patrick here today because he's got a great new film that's making the film festival circuit right now. Uh, it showed at Outfest. Outfest last weekend. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Last Friday. Right. Last Friday. Um, it's called Bitter Melon. Uh, why don't you just give a brief uh, you know the, sh- the spiel that you give for the movie sure it's a tragic comedy about a Filipino American family that has a Christmas uh, reunion gone wrong where they try to uh, effectively kill one of their abusive family members played by me Yours. <laughs> awesome uh, did you do any was your only role just acting did, like I know you've Directed your own films, right. you've written a lot of your own stuff. Yeah, I just acted in this. It was uh, a a nice was, break. Yeah, it was different, you know, and you could focus on just one thing. But um, yeah, just uh, no, no, like producing or anything like that. Finally, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> so some of you may also know Patrick from other things like Awesome Asian Bad Guys, a film that he directed, co-directed, and co-wrote. And stars. Uh, and stars in as well. Um, and also he's the co-founder uh, of the National Film Society, which is pretty active on YouTube, right? You guys are make, still making films and videos on YouTube? Uh, yeah, not as active as we used to be, but that it's going to ramp today. up. It's going to ramp up? Yeah. <laughs> really? I'm going to get exciting. the outtakes of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. We're glad we could help. You know? <laughs> and then you also directed and wrote Mr. Sadman, too, which mm. I believe to be a criminally underrated film and one of my favorite things I've seen in a very long time. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Well then, um, it's, I it's, love that film. I it, think you, I think you did an amazing job and I wish more people had seen it. So, Oh man, I wish you told me this before. I would help my self esteem. <laughs> <laughs> you should just hire me to like, uh, drop in like a tech, a daily, like, a. Uh, like a boost, boost up like text, right? Just so, so you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have wandered aimlessly for like two or three years. I can, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I can be. What did you think of this? Like, <laughs> I think you look great. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw the trailer for that. It's about a Saddam Hussein lookalike who comes to America for a new life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, it takes place in 1990, uh, and uh, it's kind of a a uh, black comedy, kind of a social critique. I love black comedies. Yeah, and um, yeah, there, it was uh, shot that in two thousand seven, and then it That's came. Amazing. We had a screening in two thousand nine. It went out in twenty eleven, and then I got my rights back, and it's been just. I've been meaning to kind of do a re edit of it, you know. So, um, I'll be sure to show it to you. Cool. Oh, yeah. Re edit. Does so that, I can praise you more? Yeah. Does, yeah. does, does <laughs> that mean that are you gearing up for p- possible relaunch? Uh, yeah. Why not? I mean, it's a different time. Nobody ever saw that movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did, and I loved it. I mean, when when you see the the the, the recut version that I've yet to cut, <laughs> you're gonna say. I love this even more. Wow, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> I think this is a Yellow Pear exclusive, huh? Yeah. You heard wow. it here first. Oh, you heard yeah. it here first? Because yes. yeah. no one, no, I'm not talking to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no one's listening. No, no one's actually going to listen to this. <laughs> no one asked me about Mr. Zad, man. <laughs> well, let's get back to Bitter Melon then. Tell, tell us about... No, no, no. No, okay. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll have plenty of time to talk about you, but uh, <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's talk about your experience working on Bitter Melon. I, I, I mean, we all saw it. And, you know, I just feel like it was a very nuanced way to explore some very dark themes, right? Themes about domestic violence, generational trauma, homophobia. But it was all done in a very, like, sort of slightly whimsical way, like a dark comedy kind of way, right? So mm-hmm. um, what, was the, what was that experience like? How did that – actually, let me back up. How, was the, how did that opportunity come up for you? 
Uh, so I've known HP since 2010. We met at a film festival. The director of the film? Yes. Uh, uh, and uh, it was actually one of the few public screenings I had of Mr. Sadman. And he saw it. And we were talking we're just gonna about We're just going to keep this. talking about Mr. Sadman. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this last night. And he actually told me that um, when he saw that, because he, for Bitter Melon, he had been working on this idea, this story, since for like 20 years, since ah. 1997. And so um, it had been marinating, and I think he told me that when he saw Mr. Sadman, I play a homeless man in Mr. Sadman for, like, a scene, right? Like, like a minute. And he was like, oh, maybe he could play Troy from that. <laughs> that crazy guy. You know? uh, so um, anyway, he, yeah, he, he talked to me a couple years ago back in 2016, end of, uh, end of the year, and he told me he had this script he wanted me to read, and I read it. And I was like, oh, this is, this is fantastic, man. This is intense stuff. Um, and then he said, great. Um, is there any character that you're, you gravitate to, towards? And I was like, oh, yeah. Mo. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, so, because, you know, he plays, like, more of the, he's a little bit more comedic and a little bit more, like, easygoing. Right. Uh, which I was like, oh, just, yeah, do me, right? <laughs> then he's like, hmm, interesting. What about, what about Troy? And I was like, oh, uh, yeah, man, you know. <laughs> but to be honest, I was like, yeah, I mean, uh, it, yeah, I thought of it as a challenge. I thought of it as, like, if he... Uh, trusts me to do it and uh, he believes that I can and you know like it just ha we just had to be able to get me there you know what I mean like everybody has that kind of ability to get really angry or upset or to go to those dark places and you just you know he created like a space and, uh, and gave me permission as well as the other like actors for me to behave that way um between like the the set was great. It was there was a lot of levity, cracking a lot of jokes. There were a lot of like uh, ad libs that didn't make it because he's like <laughs> just be as disgusting and sexist uh, as you want in this, you know. And I'm like, and that's where you shined. Okay, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fun. So um, yeah, it was a fantastic experience. I'm super thankful for it. Very cool. And the, the, not to reveal too much, but the character you played is. Uh, uh, was it was it challenging for you to play like such a like virulently misogynistic sort of you know violent kind of person right like you said you talked about the dark places that you had to like reach reach into to to really capture that character right like mm -hmm. what were the challenges for you um i think the ch first of all the challenges uh it was memorizing like 90 pages because his, <laughs> his script was... Um, this is a long script. His script was like 189 pages, Dang. 190. Right? Yeah. And at like more than 50%, yeah. Right, and mm -hmm. so like, uh, I was like, okay. So, and also, <laughs> um, I, I remember like, what I actually did was like, all right, I Googled, how do you create a character? <laughs> 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 Start from the beginning. <laughs> well, yeah. why, because most of your roles in the past, that's stuff you wrote, and yeah. it's more like yeah, yeah, what? yeah. Me, kind of like for the all difference. all the NFS, all the National Film Society YouTube videos, and even Awesome Major Bad Guys. Those are exaggerations of who I was, right? And like, and you just kept going and going. I mean, I, I joke about googling that because it was really just um, like looking up a lot of you know, like what makes a good villain and looking at like not that you're trying to imitate performances but just looking up like good villains and then um approaching um and basically getting the words off the page into your mouth right like uh the one thing i i said to myself was well um as as a director it's like you on a on an independent film you need and you want as many takes as you can get and that ain't happening if your guys if your talent if your actors uh, don't have their lines memorized, right? So I was like, I'm going to give them that, you know what I mean, at the very least. So it was a process just going through, memorizing a couple pages at a time, like saying the pages, and then going through going through that process all the way, and then one more time, and then, um, and then rehearsing with my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> 
Not not the violence. <laughs> that's, that's does she her. act? Um, she she does uh, radio and podcasting and stuff, and uh, but she has shout out her a, podcast. It's okay, we share. Uh, she used to have a podcast called Fless Weekly. Okay, which, um, <laughs> but um, she has a, a performative background for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you do have a web series as well called awesome bad guys which is on imdb i saw oh yeah <laughs> and it's posted on your youtube channel as well so mm-hmm. you have like a fascination with bad guys and did that help you create this character it was funny because i was I, I just started that with imdb like around the time that hp started talking to me so i was like oh great i did some research on bad guys what makes a good bad guy you know like they always believe that like like they're doing what they think is right, you know, and like all this other stuff. But um, it kind of helped, you know. I think uh, I think it actually just watching a lot of <laughs> of uh, videos and movies of like clips of people uh, was helpful. But um, Do you, you know, edit those clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like spotlighting one bad guy and then taking a lot of footage and cutting them and talking in detail about the character. Yeah, yeah, um, and you know, like, and and in terms of like you know getting to a certain place it's really like you just try to man i i emulated this character after uh after people i know as well like whether yeah, they be so. family members or <laughs> or uh Don't name I, any names. I think there might be people uh that you guys know that that i emulated this after but you know really interesting Hmm. Off the record. Are any of them sitting at this table right now? I like your character so much. Emoji. Thinking emoji. I shouldn't have said that. (laughs) Uh, um, But now you're one of the bad guys, which is awesome, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of fun to play. uh, I mean, uh, to play, I guess, a villain. Right, uh, they always say villains have the most fun, and and uh, like sometimes they're more f- fun than like the the protagonist. Um, but you just get to kind of like, yeah, yell and try to like it's just cathartic, to, like getting all the 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 tension and the air out of you, and and um, yeah, you I mean you feel great at the end of the at the end of the day. There's yeah. that part where you are speaking to... Spoiler alert. I know. Spoiler. There's an elderly woman that you're yelling at. Yeah. That scene. I'm like, that's pretty real. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's definitely... Uh, <laughs> is, is, is that like when I'm... Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> they saw it. You saw it. No you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. saw what he just did. So right. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, that was intense, man. Like... Uh, I said this during a couple Q and A's um, when people ask what what was the excuse me the most fun or the toughest part it was uh, that was my very first day of shooting oh. was um, that that scene <laughs> that yeah, a very that, intense was, that whole every, every every everything in that yeah. position right like whatever you know mm. what I mean wow. uh, I think it's in the trailer that I'm tied up anyway but it's like sure. you know but. Um, that was like 26 pages, man. We shot 28 pages that day, and it was uh, 26 of it was me. And, uh, and Wait, I was in like, a day? Yeah. 26 pages. Yeah. Like a 12-hour day? or Yeah, regular. Well, I, we may have gone over, but I don't remember. But, like, it was it was one day. In that uncomfortable and you guys know, position? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I wasn't tied. <laughs> I was holding the, the beam. Right. Um, Still. But yeah, it was it was intense. So uh, I'm actually glad it was the first day because I had a lot of energy and I was like fresh and mm-hmm. and getting the getting the like that the those scenes out of the way was probably pretty good and it set a good tone I think in terms of uh, okay now we're done with that and also like okay let let's move on you know I had a lot of fun with those scenes those were those were those were really like intense and pretty exhausting but um, very I guess in a way like just f- fun to do and, and, and to go to those places. It's, it seemed like th- even though you were re- playing a very dark character, it was, there was still like an enthusiasm underlying the performance a little bit. And you, I think that the comedic aspect of that character too was interesting, like being able to balance like the really dark and terrible things about him, but also he's kind of funny too. Like a lot of things he says, his gestures, like his mannerisms are like kind of comedic, right? So uh, was that intentional on your part? 
Um, I or think was so. it the writing? I mean, it, it's it's a little bit. I mean, it's 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 HP's direction. It's it's the writing. I think that um, uh, one thing that that I was hoping for was like that, you know, I, and and like if you if you just try to play a bad guy as a bad guy in like a movie like this, it might just be kind of, you know, flat, you know, because it's yeah. just like he, especially since like he's he's a uh, a, a primary character, not just some guy that shows up, and you can kind of paint him as like somebody that you barely see, and right. he's a bad guy. So, like, I think you know, for HP, he wanted he wanted this feeling of you know this guy does this stuff, but yeah, I kind of yeah, I kind of like him, and then you know or, to some extent, and then uh, and, and to like have people feel conflicted. First. At first, you can't tell at all what's going on and then yeah. right. kind of develop. that's the thing I, I didn't watch the trailer I just wanted I'm like okay I know somebody's getting killed or there's something bad is going to happen to somebody because I read the log line but I'm like well everybody's kind of like awful in their own way <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. like everybody's like well you got you're kind of annoying and you're kind of annoying <laughs> in that totally like familial way like oh, I have this person I hate this person in my family yeah and I mean that's what I kind of love about it is I mean uh, I like stuff that is tonally a little confusing yeah. you know uh movies like that are pretty fun and when i watch it it's like <laughs> i was telling a friend of mine who saw it at outfest that yeah there's just one line that i say that i ad-libbed that hp said was cool and no one ever laughs at it <laughs> and he's like well it's because you just did you know blah 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 you know and like no one's on your side and i'm yeah. like Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it still is, <laughs> but it's like still funny. Can I chuckle, hurt people? You know, <laughs> yeah, but you seem like kind of a most of the time kind of a calm, you know, intelligent guy who has a simmering stuff underneath. Smoldering. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah uh, bubbling like lava. a cauldron. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's 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 funny. Like I think that he is, um, <laughs> he's yeah, he's he's a complex dude, right? Like uh, uh, especially. Uh, sorry, I keep wanting to say things that I sh- that are really spoilery. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he's just not like a. Uh, there's a little there, there. There's a case of arrested development there, you know. Sure. And um, you know. We, we all have that sometimes. I don't know what you're about. I'm, <laughs> I'm the most. Uh, I sit in a room. Yeah. Like twice anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, now, what I like about this too is, in the other film that you did, where you're exploring like, oh, the Asian bad guy. This is like, yeah, you're an Asian Pacific Islander bad guy, but everybody is Asian right. Pacific API. Right, Filipino. Where's, Filipino, yeah, to, be exact, to be exact. To be exact, yeah. Let's be very exact. <laughs> um, which I love. And I and I know that's, you know, really important to HP. And um, how did you guys come to the story in terms of, like, this is definitely something you all relate to? Or is this something that, like, you know, do you find it relate people from other cultures of course relate to it as well mm-hmm. what things that you've been hearing from other people i mean obviously like we've gotten i shouldn't say obviously like to me at some of the screenings it's been surprising how many filipino american people come up and say and i it's usually i overhear it from hp or he tells me mm-hmm. a couple of people have come up to me and say um you know how this resonates with them uh because it you know, it reminds them of, of people they know, family members. Uh, and I think like, you know, in terms of non-Filipino people, it's, it's been similar as well. I mean, obviously like, I think it's them just connecting to the, the characters, it's characters. I, I should hope, you know what I mean? And still be like, well, he's, he's brown people's got problems too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, um, but uh yeah i mean the reaction's been 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 great as far as as far as i've seen and 
um, I'll admit I'm it's uh, it's hard for me to have like a clear perspective on it you know <laughs> obviously I think like everything oh that's funny you know <laughs> but um, that reminds me of yeah yeah <laughs> um, but in terms of like relating to it um, I think like uh, for me it's it's I, I have like uncles who are like Troy nobody that I actually am really that close to uncles that I've met who still live in the Philippines um, maybe a couple uncles that I grew up with like more often uh, but uh, you know and, and sometimes I thought of them you know how how like they would like say things and, and point and yell and you know just think that they were like charming and then fly off the handle um, so and I've had, you know, there were people that said, like, well, this reminds me of my dad. Mm. Or, like, I have daddy issues, man. Like, this totally. Yeah. <laughs> Triggers. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, I think it's awesome. And I think it's great that HP created something that, that is so personal to him. But resonates with other people. That's, you know, I mean, that's that's not that easy to do. You know what I mean? Like. Mr. Sadman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's a very personal story, actually. But <laughs> Only took him, what, uh, 20 minutes to uh, bring up Sadman again? Yeah. And we're for back to Sadman. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, so the, the fact that it was uh, predominantly, I would say 90, 95% Filipino-American mm-hmm. cast, right? And I, I would imagine some of the crew were Filipino-American too, right? Like, was there a sense of, like, solidarity, camaraderie? That was like especially unique for you guys being on that set. Um, How did it feel? Or, is it, or you, or you were. I mean, you're all, all obviously professionals, so you're gonna get the job done. But you know, was there an, that little extra push because of the the context? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it, it reminded me a lot of the awesome Asian bad guys shoot. Um, totally different concept, totally different production. But the one thing that a lot of us from bad guys came away from, or came away saying, was. It felt like a, a family, right? Because a lot of the bad guys actors had worked together over the years. Uh, we all knew each other, etc. And this felt that way too. Uh, I actually didn't know many of the actors, but just um, you know, HP and the pr- producers created like the uh, the environment where uh, everything felt very like uh, uh, welcoming and comfortable. Um, it, it may have been. Due to the fact that, like, hey, Filipino stuff, we're talking to Filipino stuff, we're talking to Filipino people, and there's that kind of, like, connection, like, yeah, I get that, you know? Um, <laughs> but uh, it was, you know, I told HP this, and, and it's, it's, it's one of the most, like, fulfilling, uh, just kind of creative experiences I've ever had, you know, just because uh, it, was, it was relatively, I mean, it's pretty different, you know? Uh, for me, so I was like, "This is this is awesome." And and working with the other like actors, I mean, they were phenomenal. Um, uh, John Norman Schneider plays Declan. Um, he was great. Yeah, Brian Rivera plays Mo. The role that I wanted. No, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no he's he's way better at it than I. He's really, uh, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he was really great too. <laughs> yeah, that dude plays the king and I sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah. He's got the he's got the hair. <laughs> That's why. The, yeah, the, that that top knot. Whatever. <laughs> the mom's character was really funny. Oh, she was fantastic, man! Like she was great. Yeah, and and at first I'm like, oh, ah, she, they're just laughing because it's like you know, lady saying an accent, you know, talking with an accent. But like her timing and her uh, the lines. I mean, it's HP's writing there too. Like the jokes. Uh, I mean, the Outfest uh, crowd. Everybody loves her. Uh, Outfest crowd particularly, like, you know, you notice, like, laughs in different places and how big they are in, 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 in others. And, uh, and yeah, she killed it. She, uh, Josephine, she was, she's super sweet and she's, uh, she's fantastic. At one point, she kind of reminded me of my mom a little bit. <laughs> what part? Triggered. What? <laughs> she was like, oh. what about her reminded you of your mom? Oh, I'm helpless. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, God. Fan me. Fan me. Fan me better. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Yeah. But also, yeah, Troy, I think we all have a crazy uncle. Do we all have a crazy uncle? Because I do. I have a horrible uncle. I have a few. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. I have two. Let's, let's name them all now. <laughs> His name. <laughs> so, yeah, you remind me a little bit. I could because nobody listens. Yeah. So, in my family. I don't listen. <laughs> People listen. Just not people. Just hold up a My dad listens to this. <laughs> yeah. 
But I'm a hairstylist, and I noticed your hair is really long, and sometimes like <laughs> like up to here, uh, and that really natural. added to you know yeah making it look a little nuts. That, yeah, that's that's <laughs> regular me. That's, but um, it's no, it was like this long at least. Yeah, uh, I I I cut it for the screening so that people wouldn't look at me as if I was him. Exactly. No. <laughs> so I was like, look, look, look. Um, well, well, speaking of, I feel like having I I've, I've known you for a while, and I, I noticed in the film uh, some of the wardrobe choices for your character looked <laughs> like some of the things that he was wearing looked a lot familiar to me. Uh, they look like things that you would normally wear. So, is, is, what was, what's the deal with that? Did you? Yeah, that's did you just like walk on set like with with what what you're wearing and guys just start shooting or what? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually a crew guy. They're like, oh shit, yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like like uh, you know, like a lot of indie film productions. Um, you know, like you you pull from your own wardrobe and stuff. I mean, sure. I've asked people to do that a ton, and and HP asked me to do it, and and uh, I was super stoked that my whole wardrobe was uh, tank tops and shorts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like legit. I was like, whoa, because uh, uh, w- there was a heat wave during the shoot, mm. and in that house there was no air condition. So between takes, they would put like fans on both ends of the room. Wait, where'd and, you guys film? In San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In what? August, September of last year, did you guys shoot in the mission too? Uh, of the year. We did shoot in the mission, but in particular, that main house was in I think the Excelsior. Okay, and um, oh, where, there. yeah, where <laughs> HP grew up. Oh, shit. So, <laughs> yeah. <Uh-oh>. so like <laughs> everybody. <Why-oh? laughs> We're all from the Bay Area, by the way. Oh, oh that's true. Huh? Well, I'm Valley. Oh, mm. sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but everybody was like it was like 95 degrees 100 degrees in the house wow and, and i was the only one dressed for the weather <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else was pretending like they're like wear, yeah, wearing sweaters, clothes for like blankets. yeah so but even i was like sweating there's a there's a lot of scenes that day where like i'm like oh wow look at the glisten like on uh in, in the in the trailer there's the karaoke scene mm-hmm. which didn't didn't make the final cut um um, but when you were karaoke, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, like you see, like sweat and all this stuff. But it was, it was an, <laughs> it was an intense day. But everybody powered through it, and um, you know, it was a lot of fun. Oh, can we, um, can we back up a little bit? I want to take a trip down memory lane and ask Patrick about his, uh, his path to entertainment and the creative Absolutely. arts. Absolutely, yeah. Like, let's where, start from the beginning. Yeah, let's do that. Where, how, where did this all start? What. Like when, how did you, how did you get into, one of the things that I think we explore on this podcast is the, the notion of like what it means to be Asian American, right? Like the trajectory of the traditional Asian American, uh, growing up here and being like encouraged to go into traditional careers, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, we're always interested in thinking and discussing like the, the path to get to, you know, things that re- reflect uh, your passion, mm. you know, artistic creative pursuits and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah. How did, how did you end up doing what you do? Um, uh, I, I wanted to make films, uh, since I was like 13, uh, but then I was a total slacker. So I didn't, I was like, I wasn't one of those like, oh, I'm going to pick up a camera. I was like, oh, I'm just going to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I, it was like, do the right thing was the first movie that was like, nice. oh, this is it. Um, but, uh, fast forward, um, you know, my, fo- uh, well, not even fast forward, like my folks were always super supportive. Um. Uh, you know, my, my, I have a brother who's like a year and a half older and he's an MD in Boston. Oh, and, um, that's <laughs> <why>. <laughs> like, we got one doctor, like, so. Yeah. <laughs> but he wasn't a doctor when I was 13. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, basically, uh, they, they've, they've always been of the mindset of, I mean, of course, like when I was younger, like my dad wanted me to be a, a, an attorney and my, uh, mom wanted me to be a doctor. Uh, but they always said to me once they realized that, you know, that those ships had sailed, um, that, you know, just whatever it is you decide to do, just do it best you can, as hard as you can and don't let up, you know? Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's been like, it's, yeah, it just kind of brought me to, to random places and meeting interesting people and working on interesting projects that, uh, some that I love. And some that uh, are for money. <laughs> <laughs> and um, let's talk about those. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's just focus on this. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, 
you know, this was definitely a project that, uh, you know, not to, not to sound too schmaltzy, but like that, I, that I really love, you know, I mean, um, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm super honored just to be a part of it. And, uh, I think that the most important thing is like, I want people to see it, you know? And, and I think HP as a filmmaker, as a director has done so many different f- types of films, whether they be musicals or horror films that, um, he's, he's gotten so much uh, like more sophisticated with the storytelling and with um, pulling performances out of people like like me you know so um, I yeah I, I'm, I'm excited to have been a part of it and can't wait to get uh, to see it get out there hmm. have you worked with him before no no um, we've uh, yeah just just friends and stuff and um uh yeah like we have a lot of things in common like hp stands for henry patrick uh my brother's name is henry my name is patrick uh <laughs> mendoza is my middle name his dad's named rahelio my dad's named rahelio we're both pretty Whoa. much the same age from this the bay good. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> both lees and parks and <laughs> 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 um, but uh, you're both Filipinos from uh, from the Bay Area too. We're both Pisces. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Oh, okay. Two days apart. Wow. Whoa. Two... Okay. Now it's getting a little creepy. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm freaking out. So you know, we're each other's spirit animals. Yeah. No, I won't, say, I won't say that for him. He's my spirit animal. <clears throat> but you've known each other for a while, and but yeah. you never like, oh, we need to work together. It's just like, oh, cool, we're kindred spirits, or yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much like. Um, we have a lot of the the first time we met in 2010 we ended up like staying up late just you know talking about movies as i mean that sounds kind of corny but it's like we're talking a lot of shit too yeah. <laughs> you know um which is always kind of fun and cathartic like shit about what <laughs> shit about shit about whom <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah nah, he's got opinions so do i <laughs> so that was eight years ago yeah and then you guys finally worked together on this project yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah. pretty cool yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was fun. I don't, know, I don't know what else to say about it. What's next for you? Mm. You've got... Um, what's next for me? Uh, what can I say? Uh, I am <laughs> still going to reboot my YouTube channel, right. National Film Society. You shout out. First. Shout out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll be pulling Please. clips from this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you going to do vlog stuff, skits? I don't know. Like, I, I did a few videos earlier this year, and I just remember thinking, like, damn, that's just hard. I forgot how much work that is, right? Can you it tell me a little a lot of work. bit oh, about man. the channel? Sure. Um, it's something that me and my friend Steve DiBianco started back in 2011. Uh, we had a channel with PBS it's called National Film Society. Uh, we talk about movies, filmmaking, pop culture. And it was kind of like just us loosely... Uh, pseudo educationally uh, making fun of ourselves and each other talking about film and that's how like Awesome Asian Bad Guys was born we kind of had a topic like Awesome Asian Bad Guys and talked about them and decided to make a movie about it you and, guys had uh, a really good one uh, every, if, it was the uh, Should I Go to Film School oh that was our first one Film yeah, School that was, no a, film that was school. a great one yeah <laughs> and it's funny though too because like back then I think in 2011 people would say yeah there's 72 hours of uh, video being uploaded every minute and now I think it's like 450, right? And, uh, mm-hmm. and you could tell it's so al- slow. And also the number of <laughs> the number of uh, yeah the, the number of YouTube channels that do like film and that do it really in depth and well. I'm like, oh, I don't I don't care about it that much. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm I'm going going to experiment with some stuff, you know, uh, trying to make it as uh, as fun and frictionless as, as as possible because you know like the i mean just like producing this stuff it, you know it it takes a lot of uh, oh this effort. is easy <laughs> <laughs> and I, <laughs> this is so easy for yeah. the ones who just show up and talk <laughs> yeah. yeah for <laughs> us Jesus. all right i'm out i'm yeah. out here <laughs> This stuff just folds itself. I know, I know. Press buttons. <laughs> and then hit upload. And then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, I but saw, you're doing all that. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I saw Asian Bad Guys in 2014, I believe it was, at 
La- LA Asian Pacific Film Festival. Lap. 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 <laughs> <laughs> And that's where I met you. Mm-hmm. And yeah, a lot of big names in there. It was really fun and really exciting for Asians. Tamlin Tamita, Randall Park. Uh, do you want to name all of them? Aaron Takahashi, Dante Bosco. Yuji Okamoto. Uh, Yuji, Al Leong, George Chung. Um, I think that's the majority of of the, the, the cast, the known cast. Uh, yeah, that was fun. I mean, that was, again, like... It was so uh, funny. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Oh really? It's hilarious. Oh, yeah? I know. I might Where put it. Can I might put see? it on. I might put it on YouTube. Uh, oh, oh. Yes. Uh, No, well, it's it's available to buy. Yeah. You, Where? You know, like, to, on. Oh, uh, iTunes. iTunes, Amazon. Play. It's not on Prime. Oh. It's on Amazon. Yeah, probably yeah. Google Play. All right. Never got on Netflix. Fuck. I mean. Um. Not yet. But not yet. Yeah. One sad man. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all gonna dovetail right? yeah, like, exactly. can, we, can we add like a little like a ding counter every time sad <laughs> <laughs> um yeah sad man's funny man it's like uh no because i remember randall auditioned for me when he and he's uh, randall park yeah really? back in 07 and he's before saying, um, fresh up he's too off. funny he was too oh, funny. Too I needed him to play like a, a kind of an FBI agent, and he was, oh, it was too funny. And ended up with Tim Kang. He just played one in uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah, he was so funny. And he was really funny. He was a scene stealer. <laughs> yeah, Maybe he didn't want a scene stealer. He was one of those. Mm-mm. Yeah, that was oh. when he was Mister Commercials, and now yes. he is Mister Fresh Off the Boat and Ant Man and many other things. Yeah, uh, it's funny because when I first got to know him a few years after. Uh, I I used to be like, man, he he reminds me of Paul Rudd. He's like the Asian Paul Rudd. Type. Oh, <laughs> and so okay. when I saw a photo of them together, I was like, holy shit! Like my mind just exploded. <laughs> Called it. Shit! I never. <laughs> it's the I, white Randall Park. I have not. The Asian Paul oh Rudd. my god! I feel like you're blowing my mind right now. Yeah, right? which is why he played the the Asian Jim on The Office because mm. he's like that guy. Yeah, I'm I'm, like I'm Asian Jim. Asian Jim. Yeah, because when I. <laughs> What, what were the movies that Paul Rudd was in with, uh, like, the Apatow movies? I forgot what they were. Oh, this is 40. 40-year-old yeah, virgin. Yeah, I was like, virgin, yeah. yeah, and I was like, oh, that's Randall, Randall oh. to me. like that. Randall Park yeah. was a rapper, too, in college. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, I remember. I, just, uh, yeah. I saw him perform one once, one of his old reps. Really? Wow. On stage. Wow. Know, comedy, comedy fest. Is, it, is he good? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> he was a he was in a jazzy hip hop group, um, <laughs> but like high was, school. Like or the, uh, what was their name? Do you remember their name? Uh, oh, something no, funny. I totally forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you we'll, know, think of, we'll think of it. It's a, it was it was the the kind of music that was going down back jazzy hip hop. <laughs> and Tamlin Tamita is always amazing. Yes, she's the best. Uh, but she doesn't remember me. I've seen her like ten times, and I always say you hello. Gotta, you gotta be there with and Patrick. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I sit there and actually talked to her for more than one minute, but yeah, I would say hi, and then she she just introduced herself to me like three times. And the last time I saw her, she introduced herself again, and I was like, oh, <laughs> how am I so Yell not again. memorable? <laughs> Someday she'll remember me. I know it. When she watches Someday. this. Someday. <laughs> yeah. When you call her out. <laughs> Damn. When she watches this on my defunct YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's not done. Um, oh, by the way, how did you get the awesome bad guys videos on IMDb? Oh, I I produce those with them. It's kind of a partnership. So, uh, so it's just you? Yeah, just me. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's where I do the, what I do a lot of my voiceovers for lately. In, in the your closet, closet. <laughs> with uh, well, just like this closet, one of these. <laughs> yeah. It's a slightly bigger closet. Yeah, That's right. This is a wonderful closet. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, but say, I was gonna say one thing about the way I dressed in Bitter Melon. <laughs> <laughs> no, like uh, every day I wake up and I like I'm walking and I just realize I'm wearing like the exact same outfit. Like that's how I dress at home clothes from like, I know <laughs> bas- basketball shorts from like the late 90s Umbros <laughs> and every cut off shirt like if you give me a free t-shirt from a film festival that's like a little too busy a little too like you know yeah I'm like oh sleeves gone <laughs> <laughs> sleeves I cut gone. the necks off yeah there you go. off of shirts yeah this is 
So I people will just see I you on the street and say, try <laughs> soon. Because. Well, I don't go out looking like that. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, come right. on. All right, yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think I wear the same outfit here every time, though. Is this the same? Like three well, times the, in a row? Let us know filming, been, so yeah. let the just viewers decide. Oh, I shouldn't change. say that. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say that. It's a uniform. A uniform. Um, how are we doing here? You're looking at Randall Park's oh, yeah. group. Ill again. Ill again. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Jazzy hip hop man. He was not bad. No, it's pretty bad good at all. Yeah. It's pretty good. He's a multifaceted, multi talented. I mean, how fun was that meeting all those people too? During Awesome Asian Bad Guys? Yeah. Um, it was great. I mean, we'd knew, known some of them through NFA, our YouTube channel. We had like Aaron and Randall on, and people had, had seen us. It was kind of very much. Uh, an organic, an intentional organic way of, of, of getting everyone because we had, when we had Phil Yu, Angry Asian Man on board, he obviously, like, the vote of confidence from him was was huge. And then people could, like, click and watch us and be like, eh, not, those guys are not so bad. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, they're not creepy. <laughs> Talented. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah, well, Debatable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still occasionally see people uh, randomly in public wearing an awesome Asian bad guys t-shirt. That's... Really, really easy to spot. It's a bright red t-shirt with awesome Asian bad guys in white, right? Uh, there, there's one time I was in Hawaii uh, a few years ago, but it was also like very close to when we were doing all the awesome Asian bad guy stuff. Uh, uh, we were walking up. Uh, Paul and I were walking up the uh, di- to Diamond Head or something, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I was walking down actually, and some guy's like, uh, he recognized me from, and he's wearing an awesome Asian bad guy shirt. <laughs> oh, shit. He better recognize it. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like the the oddest thing um, ever because you know you're kind of in the middle of nowhere, um, very far from home. But uh, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty what funny. What did you do? Uh, Stand there smiling. I said, <laughs> uh, <laughs> What do you want me to say? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I got lots of pens. Yeah. Did you, you take a sharpie out of your back pocket? Like, all right. <laughs> was, not, was not prepared. Uh, probably just, we probably just took a picture together and went our separate ways. That's pretty cool. Nice. That must have felt nice. Yeah, it was all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, I don't know, it was weird, it was flattering, but you know, yeah, yeah. So you like, it's, a, that's, a, I think your career is interesting because you play both in the digital space and also independent film too. So mm-hmm. uh, you've kind of seen how the, the, the YouTube generation is putting count, content out, right? So what did you say? 450 minutes are uploaded every minute. Yeah. Or, uh, 450, did I say hours? Hours. Yeah, hours every minute every minute and i think right now there's over 500 shows that are in production right currently like in general which is crazy like just about... in in hollywood yeah yeah 500 over 500 shows are in production right now i know it's it's, it's i don't know what it was like maybe even 10 15 years ago yeah but i i just wonder like uh how many cameras exist now as opposed to like in the mid 90s like because my family had one camera right? mm-hmm. like, and now everybody every household has like at least 12 <laughs> built in their phones and yeah so um yeah uh it's yeah, it's weird yeah it's a good time for content though yeah yeah, yeah there's my, so much pressure to put out constant content they're like what's next what's next what's next and you're like hold on a sec i just made something just watch it yeah you know? Yeah, that's why I kind of just curl up in a ball and don't make YouTube videos. I'm like, I can't, it's too much, but I can't do it. <laughs> curl up okay. in your closet. <laughs> and I was like, it's okay if I don't do this, right? Okay. No. But I saw your advice on YouTube. You know what clip I'm talking about? Phil Microfomo? No. There's, no. there's one clip. If you search Patrick Apino, the first clip that, one of the first clips that shows up, you don't know what it is. No. You want to take a look? Yes. <laughs> is, is it a cut off t shirt tutorial? <laughs> it is. No, not, not, okay. Oh, God. Advice to aspiring filmmakers. Why are they asking me such questions? <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember it? Uh, I, 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 three years ago. 
Not too long. Not too long ago. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what the advice is. Um, just, just do it. Yeah. And fail. Nike. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's true. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. Like, uh, and even as I, you know, I guess tried to uh, reboot the YouTube channel, like you get stuck in that, right? Like, cause you're like, oh man, like it's going to be really embarrassing when like 50 people watch this, you know, or, uh, it's going to suck when, you know, one of those 50 people comments like, Oh, where's the other guy? Cause you're definitely not as <laughs> funny or interesting by yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, and you just kind of get stuck up in your own head and, and you realize that, yeah, you just gotta have to, you know, kind of put it out there. Um, and, and not read the comments. Yeah, it's it, it, it's kind of a battle, right? Uh, which apparently, since I still haven't put anything out in a while, I'm still going through. But um, you know, yeah, you just hopefully add to the 450 <laughs> hours that people are watching that when they should really be reading or hanging out with their loved ones. <laughs> which part? Which part of all of this do you enjoy the most of filmmaking? I mean, you've act, you've done everything, yeah. you know, at this point. Um, to be honest, uh, all of it has like, you know, it's all of it's like really fun. I mean, yeah. I guess for me, like, uh, the funny thing was like, my girlfriend asked me this question, like, oh, uh, pick your favorite, you know, director and say, uh, or producer. And, and if, if he or she asked you like, oh, I have this project, I want you to, do you want to be in it or do you want to direct it? You know? Hmm. She's like, what would you pick? And, you know, I, I hem and I haw, and I'm like, yeah, it depends on what it is. <laughs> I'm like, oh, please. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm 50-50, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, and maybe because, you know, uh, doing a lot of YouTube videos, you really just kind of start enjoying performing, you know, and, 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 and I actually realized that in a lot of my early short films, I was always in it, you know? Um, so I guess it's just kind of manifesting and it all just dovetails. But um, I love performing, you know? Uh, I hate auditioning. But like, oh, I love God. <laughs> did you audition? Did, but no, not for HP this. I mean, I used to, like, do, I used to like, audition. I want you. Yeah, after Bad Guys, I, I ended up with, a, with a, a commercial agent and I was auditioning for a couple of years to see if I could make a few bucks. And um, and I made a few bucks, but then I was like, okay, you know, like you know, uh, uh, m so much respect to people who um, who who do it for years and day in day out, and whether they succeed or whether they continue to struggle, because that stuff is is hard. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I, I went in like enjoying it and uh, and saying to myself like, oh, if it becomes a bit of a uh, uh, the cons outweigh, you know, personally the pros, then. And I'll take a step back, but um, uh, I'm yeah. curious what sort of roles you were auditioning for. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I mean, I'll, I, in general, mm -hmm. I, I I am proud. I, I wasn't getting like I'd walk into a room and it wasn't just a bunch of people that looked like me, right? You know what I mean? Like that's good. Uh, uh, I would get, you know, for lack of better terms, and I'm not using this because of how I think of myself, but you could tell just from like the the descriptions it was like stoner um, <laughs> uh, like hipster um, <laughs> there was dude one dude that in tank top <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> out of shape dude in tank top um, uh, there was one though that I uh, that I got that was uh, I think the description was somebody like like Jack Black or Pedro from Napoleon uh, Dynamite. And I looked up Pedro and I was like, oh. <laughs> I forgot. Yes. Okay. And now, great. yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. I think they asked me to bust out some random accent at the end. Oh, and oh boy. I didn't oh. have one. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Like, because I just, I wouldn't let myself do it. Yeah. And I think it was, I think I just ended up talking weird. It didn't make the cut, but I was like, <laughs> Because they're just firing stuff at me. I was, like, holding com a computer over my head. And, like, the shot was, like, they were going to, you know, impose, some, superimpose some stuff. And I was going to be talking. Um, <laughs> and I was, like, <laughs> yeah, and, and, yeah. I want that tape. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any commercials we could see of you on YouTube? No, nah, because a lot of them, actually, uh, excuse me, take it back. Like, uh, 
there were only like a, a few, right? Yeah. Um, when, I, I one never saw, aired. I saw one. I saw. I forgot which one it was though. I feel like I've seen one. One, one yeah. never aired, and like one, and and the other. Honestly, the other two are like uh, pretty much the same thing. It's that one, right? Okay. So. <laughs> which one? I don't know. I <laughs> <laughs> okay. have to use your resources. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to say. Sorry. Sorry. Anyway. Um, but yeah. Are you still doing stuff with Steven then, or? Um, when, or it's just, you, it's all you now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think after Bad Guys, uh, you know, he uh, wanted to kind of like settle into um, his own thing, which I'm, I'm super, he's happy for him, um, what he's doing now. And, and I think, um, I think I always laugh because it's like, wow, pretty much more or less like when we started the YouTube channel, the, our our narrative, our story, was that we were just too kind of like, uh, like down on our luck filmmakers who were like, well, I guess we'll make a YouTube channel, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and everything that we've done subsequently has been because of that, you know. Yeah. So uh, was that was that before YouTube Space opened in LA? Oh yeah, yeah, it was yeah, way yeah, before, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and um, so you guys were pioneers in a way. <laughs> You said it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the the word I prefer is trailblazer. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, thank you so much. I think we're at the end of our podcast, which we usually ask our guests to sing a song. Sure. No uh, hesitation whatsoever. Easy. I love that. <laughs> I've had no guests hesitate yet. So that's so great. Welcome to the party. But you have to pick a song. That... Um, I do have a song in mind because I looked at the Kickstarter mm-hmm. and I saw that there was the uh, the pledge level that was, oh, hey, like if we hit this pledge level, we're going to purchase these songs. And there was one song that I'm pretty sure HP wanted, which I heavy? believe is, huh? He Ain't Heavy? Yeah. I don't know that song. Oh, okay. Damn. How about the song you sing That's in the film? Song. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, that's yeah, perfect. Do you want Even the better. the Kai uh, song, right? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not a Kai song. <laughs> uh, it's like this. This it's, we we recorded some of that stuff uh, here in Burbank when he mm-hmm. first was visiting before mm-hmm. we before we shot it. Oh, and um, basically, like he had me screaming in a hotel room, <laughs> and I was literally like my I'm not used to that, so like my throat was like killing me. Uh, do you want to sing but the Kai song? About it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the outro real fast. Sure. Um, why don't you remind everybody? Are there future screenings of Bitter Melon coming up? Yeah, uh, Bitter Melon is going to. As far as I know, the next screening is August 4th um, in New York at the New York Asian Film Festival uh, (ACV). Uh, go check it out. I think it's like playing in the afternoon, so on the weekend. So no excuses. What else better you got to do? Are you gonna be there? <laughs> You want to go? No. no. <laughs> Looking at people like that what with your arms my, crossed. My, 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 my freaking father in my house. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, National Film Society? When can we start uh, expecting oh, yeah. to see those videos up? Um, I don't know. When, when, when can I get a cut of this? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that, too. Right? I want to talk more off about that. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. oh yeah. synergy? Oh, synergy? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. We'll see. Um, well... Thanks for listening, Yellow Perilers. Don't forget to follow and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and Spreaker. And find us on yomyomf.com. As always, thanks to them for hosting us. Let us know what you think. Leave your comments or questions in a voicemail at 650-YELLOW-7. That's 650-935-5097. Or tweet us at It's Yellow Peril. Or email us at yellowperilpod at gmail.com. And Instagram, yellowperilpod. And... YouTube, where you're hopefully watching this video. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, so you have a song. Sure. Yeah. Feel uh, free to use the whole room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. I'm trying to think of a song that I know lyrics to. I guess I could try singing the song from the movie. Yeah. The the one where I'm tied up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never known what love could be. One day I hope that my love will find me.
Deep in my heart, I know the truth. I know that one day my love will find you. Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was awesome. <laughs> I got no shame. <laughs> <laughs> what is that song? It's in the movie. It's when, uh, oh, I mean, I know it's in the movie. Oh, what, oh, what? All the songs are HP songs. Oh, oh that's just so like, original. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Even when, uh, you know, when the Kai audition tape, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. it's not like you, I was, ex- you'd expect like an R&B song or yeah. something. But it was just some weird kind of like. Well, you got to clear those not songs. Weird, say, yeah. Name <laughs> the one go-to Filipino karaoke song. There's always that one. Stevie B, Waiting for Your Love. Spring Love, CBB. Yeah. Uh, masterpiece, no? Atlantic Star. Uh, my like... Way. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a good one. Which apparently created problems in the Philippines for a minute. Uh oh. People would, like, kill each other. Oh. Huh? What? Because of the current. What? There was, like, an argument. That, oh. I don't know. Hmm. I heard about it over the weekend. I haven't looked it up yet. I don't know Scary. where. Where? Frank Sinatra, My Way? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. Who knew that song would uh, inspire such violence? Whoops. Because <laughs> somebody didn't want him to do it his way. <laughs> we'll look that up for next time. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>